Morgenstein and Jordan Auslander when they were talking about Mad Mel going to radio and other digital things and being at the Midtown International Theater Festival. And now Gary has a wonderful play called Saving Stand at a new festival called Broadway Bound. Here is the entire interview. Hi, I'm Jordan Auslander, and I'm with aspiring writer, author, aspiring, what am I, who am I kidding myself? This guy's got a track record. Introduce yourself, Gary. Gary Morgenstein, I'm the author of Mad Mel and the Meridians, which began as a stage play back in 2011. This was my idea. I tried to think of the danger of a writer's imagination and couple that with political commentary, not confined just to Earth, but throughout the Milky Way galaxy. So I made up a play, wrote a play, um, about a writer who says that he's creating, he's creating a cottage industry of all these books about the ancient aliens, the Meridians, who apparently once were on Earth. But he thought he made them up. The problem is they actually existed, and he interfered with their invasion plans to conquer Earth and to bring it as part of the Meridian um, Empire. And this brilliant actor here, Mr. Auslander, played Flem. And actually, I wrote the, the role with him in mind, and he didn't screw it up too badly. He got a, he got a Best Supporting Actor nomination at the festival when, the, when we went up in New York City. What festival was that? That was the Midtown International Theater Festival. Thank you for reminding me, sir. I don't have a cue card anywhere around here. So uh, flash forward five years um, later, and you think about all the um, possibilities of digital entertainment now. And radio is almost, it's so retro, it's almost the future. Because in radio, you have almost limitless imagination. There's no CGI. There's no one doing it for you. It's just the actors and the wonderful sound effects making you actually think and actually transporting yourself into their world. It's like reading, in a way, that it's just you and the word. So here it's just you and the voice. So we assembled a wonderful cast, including Jordan, um, Chase Valers, um, um, uh, Marlene Villafane, Isabel Boucher, and Eric um, Coffley to, to, to play, and uh, Mike Sargent directed and produced it. And now Mad Mel and Radiance is a, is a sci-fi radio series up at iTunes. Stan Freeberg talked about the, the what you could do with an audience's imagination in, in the radio milieu. Uh, I, I know when you do a stage play, I mean, one of the first stage plays I saw with, you know, The Blue Planet. I was a child. This was on Grand Concourse in the Bronx. And I'm thinking, oh, great, science fiction. And that's like, I was disappointed because they were like the sets and the whatever. It was like the paper bag players, which are wonderful in and of itself, but you build it up for a kid. But with radio... Oh my gosh. You, you, you don't need any props. You just need to stand there. You do need the odd sound effect. We do need the odd sound effect, and that's wonderful. And sometimes you just lean into it, and you get a... It's almost... The word cheesy isn't right. It's just exaggerated, and that's also the fun about radio. Well, well, we can't say cheesy anymore because of lactose intolerance. Okay, so there's like um, non-fat yogurt, something like that. And, and that's what you do, and you just sit back, because so much of entertainment now... I, like movies, for example, instead of storyline, all too often, it's the special effect. You don't have to have the dialogue, you don't have to have the acting, you don't really need the directing, you just need the CGI, you just need the com com computer animation. And that takes away from the, the need to tell a story and just one-to-one -one with the audience, because at the end of the day, it's your, it, it's your talking to someone just sitting out there, or you're writing to someone reading, and it's a very almost, I, I say, I hate to say intimate because Jordan's going to make a dirty crack, but it is truly... Wait, 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 let's, let's double back. Uh, in I, in I, innuendo, I, we always get hit for, because of what goes through other people's minds, which is attributed to us. How many times has someone said something innocent like, do you have any fresh tomatoes? And you say, oh, really? And then you get slapped because something went through their mind, and it's the audience's imagination. The most terrifying film don't show the blood and gore. Yeah. They leave it to your imagination. Thank you. Exactly. Psycho. Can you turn the camera around and see our lovely uh, camera person? Yeah. And also, you should, the encounter on Broadway right now is just what you're talking about, where we get the headphones. Oh. Uh, I was just mentioning the encounter on Broadway, which just has the headphones, and you get all the sound effects, and you just ha you're you're in your own individual world, radio world, because it's all done through sound with Simon McBurney. So you can create your own subjective heaven or hell based on you know tailoring to you individually, because you have an imagination. If you don't have an imagination, well, there's <laughs> porn. <laughs> and so you, let me ask you, Jordan, who was brilliant. So you played the role. Come on. Oh, you played the role on stage, and then you did the um, the radio drama. What's what's the big difference as an actor? Well, what I got paid. No, no. <laughs> Very I, little. I, I no, 
Yeah, very, very, very little. No one goes into the acting for just the money. Um, well, it was... Again, the rehearsal period was, of course, longer for the play. You got to have all those lines, and you have to have them, you know, in the right order. And and, and the ones you didn't change. And the ones that you did. Well, of course, when you forget a line, you just, you know, insert. But that's okay if you're in character, you're all as well. I mean, really, the way we feel about writers as actors is that the, the, the script is merely a point of departure. I mean, who really cares? I mean, you heard about the actress who was so dumb she slept with a writer. <laughs> I, I, yes, I've, I've met the lovely Marcina, and she's wonderful. And it's my first one. Yes. yes. <laughs> Tell us about the role of Flem. Now you're, the, you're you're a Moradian, suck up, sniveling alien. Yes, I I I I thought that that's I. Why, that's why when I wrote the, the the role, I thought you. Yes, because I could bring a lot to the the psychophantic, or is it sycophantic? I I don't really know. I guess with a name like Flem, he'd be more sycophantic than psychophantic. He wasn't crazy about being a psychophant, but he was still, you know, a a you know a, a pathetic toady who was <laughs> well. Again, you know, self preservation is, is is a very powerful motivating factor in someone's life. If you are in a situation where you are terrified, you know, a, a, say a political situation where you're working for someone or in a, in a milieu where you, a milieu, sorry, can't buy teeth through the mail, um, do, do I need to rescue at this point? No, okay. no, not at all. Are you sinking? I'm not, I'm just sinking into this couch and my posture is suffering. No, no, no. Speaking of the politics, the leader of the Meridians is the, um, evil Donald, the Imperial Chancellor. So we try to make this political as well. We don't. It's very um, nonpartisan or bipartisan it because is, we, we. It is our galaxy, Milky Way centric. So we do not deal with other galaxies here. So I, I know you've taken a lot of flack for that in the press and in the science fiction chat rooms for making this only about our galaxy, unlike say Star Wars, which is galaxy far, far away and all that. And of course the ethnic, uh, you know, uh, bias towards you know humanoids. Well, in the Moradi, I think the point is that as in the play, Mel Mel Worthington, who's the um, the writer, he says human, human. Well, he, well, he insists he has part um, Moradian has forty two point three percent Moradian blood, because the Moradians, just as a, a quick segue, they uh, along with the Anunnaki um, were ancient aliens who visited Earth and they interbreeded with humans and it and, and gave us our, the science and technology. That's something that trends um, lates across and, and goes across all uh, ancient civilizations, the, the depictions of aliens and spaceships. Well, there there is some scientific evidence that the, the Earth and our uh, actually biological life on Earth was seeded by asteroids and comets, you know, from uh, interstellar matter. So, you know, with this, this isn't Totally far-fetched. And so the, the reality is that what we're talking about is how governments lie to their people no matter where in the Milky Way galaxy. You know that's not true. <laughs> so we really lean into that and make fun of and satirize all parties and all people. When it's, The point of view is that you should just be honest um, to your people. But as we know, governments aren't that way. And so what happens is so that... Wait, you, you're saying that you are, you are to politics and government what say Moliere was to the medical profession. Yes, I don't know what that means, but it sounds good and no one else will know what it means either. It's pseudo-intellectual. <laughs> so that's why in, 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 Flem, now Flem's character has substantial growth. He becomes a hero. He sheds his toady, sycophantic, sniveling disgustingness. He, he also discovers the virtues of but it's it's Scotch? well yes it's it's sort of the Joseph Campbell's hero's journey which you know uh, you know people but that sorry the hero's journey as we saw you know Lucas embraced that in Star Wars and now you know if you're if you're a protagonist I and I'm being so bold to say as or uh, that that Flem would be the protagonist yeah. um, would end the, the the show in the same frame of mind that he started where's the journey where's the growth it's just like clocking in so yes there are what you know some people are born to greatness others are th have it thrust upon them and what what was the other one shakespeare said born to greatness the greatest thrust upon them and some texted but text it's everything. a phone in their greatness yes, yes exactly some yes now, what, what uh, the last line is thrust upon them. thrust upon them now, I, I do that now jordan's many skills in addition to being an actor is that he sings meridian songs Meridian hymns, which I wrote, um, and I think these these songs have not been. 
I can't give complete credit to that. We had to do... You see, everything that is uh, transmitted, uh, whether by radio, live radio waves or television waves, goes out into space at the speed of light. So, uh, Meridia is, what, 16.7 light years yes, from Earth, indeed, so yes. um, they're uh, just uh, finding out that Gore lost the election, I believe. <laughs> um, so, they're, they're yes, uh, you want to travel back in time, you go out in space. So, what I, I did sort of a, a statistical analysis, and I, I'm guessing that what passes for high culture in music would be uh, Florence Foster Jenkins. <laughs> Uh, so I figured in the time it turned around, so by the time, uh, you know, Meradia is thinking that this is the gold standard for musical entertainment. And would you like to um, sing a couple songs? Not really, because we want to keep an audience here. But we, but, but we might either generate an audience or um, they might take our show off the air. Well, no, that, that's true. But you see, it, there's a cultural difference here. What passes for Meridian high culture uh, would be crowd control on Earth. But this would be an honor for you for the fir to have a human for the first time in thousands of years sing the songs of Meridia. An honor. An awesome responsibility. Which Of which you're up to, I think. Um, Probably I, not, but I'm, I'm going to you. I, 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 not, I don't feel put on the spot at all. So go for it. Yes. Well, do you need your Do you need your lyrics? Yes. I, I would. I would have to listen. Rehearsal. Rehearsal. Oh, I mean, you're damn Should weird. we go with the, the the my pleasure bubbles? Yes. My my pleasure bubbles. Yes. Is this the one like Jerry Lewis in it? My, you, you would describe it as Jerry Lewis on on crack. Yes. Which it, many it, of us it. consider redundant. Yes. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Sanskrit translation, yes. but, you know. We want to thank everyone who's for joining still, in and to let them know who's still that... still not holding their ears. Yes. Or hiding behind... Mad Mel and the Meradians up at iTunes, at, at Podbean, at Mailman, Madmel Saves the World com. And yes, I know you're about to ask this question, Eva. There are a new line of sci-fi books called Ancient Aliens, Meradians and Anunnaki, the secrets truly, truly and finally revealed about the parents of humanity. Coming soon. They're on your screen. No, they're not. Thank you, all humans. We love you. Mwah. It's a great planet, but we should really want to live here. No. I, when, do we, when, when do we go home? We go home, actually, as soon as she turns off the camera. Yeah. Shh. I need some Meridian Mai Tai. Meridian Mai Tai? What about the scotch? This is a great planet for scotch. Yes, we like the scotch. We're going to bring some scotch home. Absolutely. All right. No, 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 no,